Hey there class, we're going to take a look at these problems in this review sheet just to help out uh, anyone who's having some trouble with this unit. So first thing first, we're going to take a look at number one. Find the exact value of each. Oops. Now, this one, this is sine of 165 degrees. Now, we don't know sine of 165 degrees. This would be on a non-calculated part of the test. So we need to break this angle up into two different values. So what I'm going to say is this is going to be the sine of, and maybe I try to come up with a pair of numbers that would add up to 165. Um, so since it ends in 5, I'm usually probably going to think I'll use 45. Um, and so if I did 45 and 120, well, those are two angles that are on our unit circle, so we can do those 120 plus 45. Now, we can't just split these up. It's not equal to sine of 120 plus sine of 45. We have to use one of our identities. And so in this case, sine of x plus y is equal to sine of the first angle, 120, times cosine of the second angle, 45, plus cosine of the first angle, 120, times sine of the second angle, 45. And then we can plug into each of these ones looking at our unit circle. Uh, so if we, if we think back to our unit circle, sine of 120 that's right here, root 3 over 2 cosine of 45 is going to be root 2 over 2, cosine of 120 is negative a half, and sine of 45 is also going to be root 2 over 2. So let's go ahead and put those back in here. Root 2 over 2 plus and this one we said was going to be negative half times root 2 over 2. All right, and then we can just multiply these all out. On this side, we get root 6 over 4, because that's square root of 3 times, um, right here, square root of 3 times square root of 2, divided by 2 times 2 gives us root 6 over 4. Then on this side, we've got negative 1 times root 2, which is going to be negative root 2 over 2 times 2, which is 4. And so this is going to be equal to square root of 6 minus square root of 2 all over 4. That will be our answer for this. Moving on to the next kind of question, it's the same sort of idea. This time we've got sine of 105. So 105 we can make up of 60 plus 45. And so we can do the same sort of process. I won't probably go through this entire one, but you can kind of see this goes sine of 60, cosine of 45. So we do that step there plus cosine of 60, sine of 45. And just as a quick reminder, these sum and difference formulas are sort of coming from this. So in this case, it was uh, sine of 60 plus 45. So that means it's going to look like sine of 60 and 45. And so this should be sine 60, cosine 45, plus cosine 60, sine 45. Hopefully you see that and follow along with me there. All right, so that's what I get in this situation. And I can go ahead and plug in all of my numbers for these uh, if you so desire to do that. Um, sine of 60 is going to be root 3 over 2 times root 2 over 2 plus 1 half times root 2 over 2. And so in this case, we'll get something that comes out to be uh, root 6 plus root 2 over 4 as our answer. So it, go through the work on that one. If that doesn't quite make sense, you can hopefully see where that's coming from here. All right, so now we've got another one that says simplify. 
And when I look at this, the first thing I see is this is a sine times a cosine plus a cosine times a sine. And we were just playing around with these these identities, and so hopefully we can recognize that this looks quite similar to some of our items here. Sine, cosine, plus cosine, sine. And so what I'm going to use is say that whatever this first angle is and the second angle, it's going to be equal to sine of those two angles added together. And so in this case, we've got 2u as our first angle and 2u as our second angle. And so this is going to wind up being um, sine of 2u plus 2u, which is just the sine of 4u. I think this is just about simplified. If you wanted to do more to it, we've got those double angle things that we could have done. Um, another thing you could have potentially done with this was just say, well, these are actually both the same term, just you know, sort of flipped around. And you could just add them together and then use some of our double angle uh, answers. But this is the way that I would have done this one. Now for this last one, look at this. This is tangent plus tangent. Right? So tangent plus tangent over 1 minus tangent tangent. And so if you recall, this is another one of these identities. It's this one right here, tangent of A plus B. So when we look at this, it's going to be, this is going to be equal to tangent of 3 theta plus theta. Because this is our first angle. This is our second angle in this case. And so we'll just add them together, and we get tangent of 4 theta as our answer. All right, so this is our first page. We'll move on. On to the second page. Alright, so for number five it says verify the identity. So to do this we're going to start out by uh, plugging in some numbers. Looking at this, I've got here tangent of two numbers added together. So I'm going to start by using the identity that we were just using, which says that tangent of an angle plus another angle is going to be tangent of the first angle, which in this case is 135 degrees plus the tangent of the second angle, which is just a theta. It's not a number, but I can still go through and plug it in. Then we'll divide by 1 minus, and then it's the tangent of each multiplied together. So this will be the tangent of 135 degrees times the tangent of theta. And this is one of those situations where we might want to make sure that we know what the tangent of 135 is. and 135 is the uh, the angle that is directly up and to the left in the second quadrant. And so this would be, uh, if we look at it sine, cosine, it's going to wind up being negative 1 is what the tangent of 135 is. You can look at your unit circle or whatever you'd like. Um, but if you wind up looking at a unit circle, you get over here 135 it's going to be root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2, which winds up simplifying to negative 1. And so all of these tangent 135s I'm going to replace with negative 1. So negative 1 min plus tangent theta. That's my numerator. Um, divided by 1 minus negative 1 times tangent theta, which is going to be equal to negative 1 plus tan theta over 1 plus tangent theta. And so you'll see that that's the same as what we had at the beginning. And if you're showing your work on these, you kind of want to copy this down um, as you go sort of what your goal is, so that at the end of the problem, 
we wind up with two things that are equal to each other, just like this. I know it takes a little bit of extra writing, but it's not that bad to do. You might also want to make a note somewhere along here that the tangent of 135 is equal to negative 1, and that that's sort of where you were plugging that in everywhere. All right, let's look at another one. I've got here the sine of theta minus 3 pi over 2. And this is another instance where I'm looking at something this looks kind of like a sine of x minus y, where x is theta and y is 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and use my formula that I've had for that before, which is the one that's sine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle, 3 pi over 2. In this case, it's going to be minus, because it's a negative in here, minus cosine of the angle theta times sine of 3 pi over 2. And if you recall from the unit circle, the cosine and sine of 3 pi over 2, well, the cosine of 3 pi over 2, because 3 pi over 2 is straight down, uh, the cosine is going to be 0. It's going to be sine theta times 0 minus cosine theta times, and sine of, of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And so we wind up here with the first term being 0, the second term just becoming cosine theta. And cosine theta is equal to cosine theta, so we're good. And I'll make sure that I bring this down throughout so that we're keeping this target in mind, that we're always trying to get this equal to cosine theta. This is the way that you want your work to be shown properly. All right, moving on to number 7. Sine theta is equal to 15 seventeenths, where theta is between 0 and 90. So this is telling us at first that we're dealing with something in the first quadrant. And so it's a good idea to kind of draw this out. Um, and it says sine is 15 seventeenths. So that means that the 17 is going to be our hypotenuse. The 15 is going to be our vertical side of the triangle. And so our triangle is going to look something like this, where we have, and you know, I'm going to actually get rid of this, these axes here, so we don't really need them. We've got 15 here as our vertical, 17 as our diagonal. And I assume we're going to need to know this one down here, the x component. Um, if you remember how to go through and calculate this, or if you remember your triples, um, you can figure this out. But I'm just going to put in my calculator, 17 squared. So that gives us, that should be equal to 15 squared plus, you know, whatever this unknown length of the triangle is squared. So I get 17 squared is 289 minus 15 squared gives me 64. And so if I take those two and subtract them, I get 225. If I take the square root of that, I get 15. And so this is a a 15 Wait a minute. Let me double check that. Oh no, I get 64. That's what I get. Okay. So I get 64, so I get 8. And so my, my last leg of this is 8. If you remembered that off the top of your head, good for you. Um, and if not, that's fine. You can go ahead and calculate it pretty quickly, just using a little bit of Pythagorean theorem. And so I get here that x is equal to 8, and now I have all of the information I need for my triangle. Now what I'm looking for here is the double angle equation that we have for this tangent 2 theta. And if you remember, tangent of 2 theta, and you can look at your equation sheet, which you'll have on the test, is equal to 2 tangent theta divided by 1 minus 
tangent squared theta. And so we can just plug into this one using what is tangent theta. And so since this is our angle right here, sorry I clicked on that, since this is the angle, uh, we can kind of go through and say, okay, well, this being the angle, tangent theta should be 15 over 8. Opposite over adjacent, 15 eighths. And so we can just plug that all in here. So we get this is going to be equal to 2 times 15 eighths divided by 1 minus 15 eighths squared. And if you wanted to go through, and you could simplify this either by calculator or by hand. Um, I'll go ahead and do it by hand here. So we get on the in the numerator, we get 30 eighths or 15. Well, I'll just leave it as 2 times 15 eighths for now, and we can simplify that more as we go. And then in the denominator, I'm going to get 1 minus 15 squared is 225. I was just doing this on the calculator, so that's why I know that. Divided by 64. And if we do this one, you know, if we wanted to actually subtract these, this would become 64 over 64. And so 64 minus 225. I'm just doing this on my calculator. This is going to be equal to in the denominator. Just rewriting what I got here. Uh, 64 minus 225 is negative 161 64ths. That's kind of a weird way to write it, but that's what we've got. Now, <coughs> numerators and denominators, that sort of thing. We can say that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying with the reciprocal. So this is just going to be equal to... Oops. This is just going to be equal to um, 30 eighths times negative 64 160 firsts. And so if we say this is 8 and 64 is 8 times 8, so we can just sort of cancel this to being an, an 8. And so we wind up with 30 times 8 in the numerator, which is 240. over 141. Sorry, 161. Oops. And I don't think this will uh, simplify any further. You either check on your calculator or just do a couple practice divisions or just leave it at that. Um, I know there's a few steps that simplification, but the main part is, is here. At this point, this is the correct answer, you just need to simplify it a little bit. And so most of the points would be gotten there. Alright, let's go ahead and look at this next one. It's a similar kind of question. Um, in this case we've got sine of theta is equal to negative four-fifths, and in this case where theta is in the fourth quadrant. <coughs> and so that tells us so our triangle is going to look something like this. This one's 5. The sine tells us opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 4 there. And then that leaves us with this. And hopefully we remember this Pythagorean triple 3, 4, 5 as we can look at it there. So I've got... Um, I'm looking for the cosine of 2 theta. And if you remember, there were a few different formulas we had for cosine 2 theta. Um, there was cosine squared minus sine squared. Let me pull them up. All right, so we have them right here. Um, in this case, we're looking at cosine of 2 theta. So we can either use cosine squared a minus sine squared b, or 1 minus sine squared 2 sine squared a, or 2 cosine squared a minus 1. 
And in this case, since we already know sine theta is equal to negative four-fifths, I'm just going to use this version right here. And that'll be the most helpful for us in this situation. So it's going to be one minus two sine squared a. So cosine of two theta is going to be equal to one minus two sine squared regular theta. And since we already know that sine theta is equal to four-fifths, or negative four-fifths, I'm just going to say this is equal to one minus two times negative four-fifths squared. And so we go through and do that. This is going to be equal to one minus two times. And so four-fifths, negative four-fifths squared is just going to be, oh, whoops, negative four-fifths squared is just going to be um, 16 twenty-fifths, but positive because it's, you know, a negative times a negative gives you a positive. And that'll come out this way. And so we can multiply both, uh, multiply out the 2 times 16. We get this is going to be 1 minus 32 twenty-fifths. And then the 1 we can rewrite as 25 twenty-fifths minus 32 twenty-fifths. And this will be equal to negative 7 twenty-fifths. And that should be our answer. That's what the cosine of double this angle would be equal to. Okay. So here we've gone through half the packet. I'm going to stop this video here uh, and make the rest of the packet separately.